From Alice in Wonderland syndrome to water allergy, here are the top 5 weirdest medical conditions. So Alice in Wonderland syndrome is a neurological disorder, uh, obviously named after Alice in Wonderland, and that's because patients will experience uh, symptoms similar to what Alice experienced. Um, so they might see objects appearing bigger or smaller than they actually are, objects might seem to appear farther away or closer than they actually are, and they might have an altered perception of time as well. Another characteristic of this condition is having an altered uh, body image in the sense that certain parts of your body might appear to change and adapt a weird shape. And then finally it's also associated with headaches, so patients might experience uh, quite severe headaches uh, when having these symptoms. While the reasons for this syndrome is not fully understood, Alice in Wonderland syndrome uh, has been associated with migraines, brain tumors, fevers, um, epilepsy and like encephalitis, so a se like a severe infection of the brain. So that's it for Alice in Wonderland syndrome and moving on we have foreign accent syndrome. This is a very rare neurological disorder where following uh, some sort of brain injury, could be a stroke, uh, also encephalitis or trauma, patient will develop a completely different accent. So it's kind of as if I started speaking in an Australian accent out of a sudden. Um, there have been very few recorded cases of foreign accent syndrome and not a lot is known about it. But it is theorized that it, it develops following an injury to some of the areas of the brain related to speech. So there are two main areas. One is Broca's area, the other one is Wernicke's area. And um, essentially Wernicke's area is the brain's sensory speech area. So it's uh, the area of the brain related with interpreting speech and really like understanding it. While Broca's area is the motor speech center, so uh, where we will find our ability to produce language, so speak and even uh, think of the words that we want to say. Uh, patients with Broca's aphasia, which is when there is a lesion in Broca's area, a lot of the times might know what they want to say, but not be able to actually say the word. So, foreign accent syndrome, uh, the, the main theory is that it is related to damage in those areas of the brain. Also, in some cases, foreign accent syndrome might be related to a conversion disorder. This is where a lot of psychological stress then translates into physical symptoms. Now, if you develop foreign accent syndrome, um, this could be just a transient change and patients might recover their normal accent uh, with some therapy and uh, time. But for some, unfortunately, this might be a permanent change. There has been a recent case of foreign accent syndrome, which was reported by the BBC, where uh, an American patient uh, developed an Irish accent um, after a diagnosis of prostate cancer. So this is because of uh, cancer metastasis affecting the brain, and then he developed foreign accent syndrome. And interestingly, one of the first recorded cases of foreign accent syndrome, according to the BBC, was during the Second World War, where um, a civilian was hit by bomb shrapnel in the head and developed a more German accent. And when they were returning to safety, um, they thought that this person might have been a German spy, so uh, not the best luck there, but uh, I guess it happens. So next we have the Laughing Death. The Laughing Death is reference to a disease called Kuru, which we've just talked about in a previous video. It's about prions, so I think you should go check that out as well. But essentially, Kuru was termed the Laughing Death because um, allegedly patients would develop an uncontrollable fit of laughter when as the disease progressed and they would eventually die. So Kuro is caused by prions. These are misfolded proteins. So they aren't viruses or bacteria or fungi or whatever other organism. They are actually just a protein. And they're very scary because our body doesn't have many ways of dealing with it and it can be quite contagious. Kuro was first discovered in uh, the four people of Papua New Guinea. And um, this was because they, as a funerary ritual, they used to eat the deceased person's brain. And that was a way that the prion would then transmit to the healthy person. And they would develop Kuru as well. So the first symptoms of Kuru actually appears several years after the person has been infected. 
and it would usually just be some difficulty in speaking, some unsteadiness in walking. This would then progress until the person developed the allegedly um, uncontrollable fits of, of laughter and um, eventually the, it would lead to death, unfortunately. Now this disease was effectively eradicated in, in the previous century after this practice of uh, cannibalism was banned. However, there are other forms of prion diseases such as Crisfield Jacob disease. And if you want to learn more about these diseases, check out our other video, it talks a lot about prions. Moving on, we have water allergy or aquagenic urticaria. This is a condition where even the smallest drop of water can lead to uh, quite a severe allergic reaction. So the person might develop rashes, um, experience some burning in the skin, itching, and it can be so severe that it will lead to swelling and even difficulty breathing. So you can imagine how inconvenient it might be to someone suffering from this condition. Uh, even the things we take for granted, like taking a shower, might trigger this, or even drinking water. The exact cause of this disease is not really known, but it's thought to be due to an over-exaggerated response of your immune system to water, a faulty response really, to water. So people with aquagenic urticaria might experience other types of urticaria, such as um, physical urticaria, which is essentially you develop rashes following physical contact or vibrations or pressure. Um, and there's also cholinergic urticaria, which is related to changes in temperature. So going from, let's say, a cold place to a warm place might trigger an allergic reaction. Diagnosis of this condition usually involves a skin test where essentially a drop of water is put into the skin and you check if the patient reacts or doesn't. And in terms of treatment, uh, this can be treated with antihistamines to try and reduce the allergic reaction. Also with avoidance of water, so try not to expose yourself to water as, as hard as it might be. Uh, and in severe, more severe cases, it can be treated with uh, corticosteroids or more potent immunosuppressants. Next, we have Cotard syndrome, also known as walking corpse syndrome. This is a condition where the patient holds the belief that they are either dead, they don't exist, or they have lost their internal organs. And this belief can be so strong that they stop drinking, stop eating, because since they are dead, they don't need any nutrition, so why would they eat? Cotard syndrome is often associated with severe depression, and it is a form of delusion, or a false belief that is not based in reality. This condition is thought to be associated with an impaired functioning in the frontal and temporal lobes, uh, which are associated with mood and perception. Diagnosis of Cotard syndrome often involves a thorough uh, psychiatric evaluation uh, from a mental health specialist, and it will usually also include some imaging and physical tests to rule out any underlying diagnosis. It is important to speak to a health professional if anyone is experiencing Cotard syndrome, as an early diagnosis and early treatment might prevent complications such as malnutrition or self-harm. While these conditions might be weird or unusual, uh, it is important to know that they are real conditions affecting real people all over the world. And while there is a lot of research being done, there's still a lot that we need to learn about. We hope that with this video we managed to spark on you a little bit of interest in these more unusual medical conditions, and maybe one day you can make the difference. Keep learning.